So the Texans just dropped their ninth game of the season. They're now sitting at 4-9 and nine with three games to go. The following two against Jacksonville and Pittsburgh are going to get so ugly. Um, 26-16. The Texans had chances, but like always, they didn't take advantage of those chances. So, you know, that's pretty much been the story of this team this season with all the injuries, all the adversity they have had to overcome. I mean, it doesn't surprise me that they lost to the Niners. It surprised me how they lost to the Niners. I mean, you let Jimmy Garoppolo tear you up defense. You, you, you were shutting him down, making him look like the mediocre quarterback. But then TJ Yates comes in because Savage got hurt, and the defense decides they don't want to play anymore. And that, that's been the story, man. This defense played good against Cincinnati in the following game. Deshaun Watson goes off, and guess what? Defense says, nope, we're going to blow this game. Mm, it, it, at this point, it's just clearly a variable problem. Players look lost out there. Yes, I understand, you know, sometimes players need to execute, but when your players aren't in position to make the plays, how can you expect the place to be made? Anyways, let's get into this game. Tom Savage, uh, I feel like he regressed a bit this game. His first drive was pretty decent, but after that, he was really struggling. And then he ended up getting hurt, so then in comes TJ Yates. TJ Yates' first two drives, which happened to be the last drive of the first half and the first drive of the second half, he scored, or he had scoring touchdown drives, both to DeAndre Hopkins. At this point, I think DeAndre Hopkins is the best wide receiver in the NFL, man. Like, the guy's just quarterback proof. The only quarterback that freaking ruined him was last season, number 17. But, without a doubt, this guy is by far the best wide receiver in the NFL. I don't want to hear anyone talking about Julio Jones and Antonio Brown and Odell Beckham because DeAndre Hopkins is the real deal. He's the best wide receiver in the NFL. He made the 49ers bench a corner. That's how good he is. Other receivers really weren't all that there. <laughs> Tight ends, man. Steven Anderson. Oh, God. After having his best game in his career, he... Had his worst game of his career. He had two dropped passes, which is really something that he's never struggled with. He's, he can catch the ball. I don't know where those drops came from. They didn't really get much open. He's always been not a good blocker because, you know, obviously he's too small for that. But besides Hopkins, I'd say the receivers really weren't there. Will Fuller had a couple catches of first drive, I want to say, but... Other than that, it really wasn't there. The run game, it was on and off, on and off. Of course, Bruce Ellington couldn't get anything going in the limited time that he went in for Lamar Miller because Lamar Miller did get hurt for a bit. You know, they didn't really miss out on much, but nonetheless, running game was kind of up and down, not really there. Um, offensive line. Also up and down at first, doing a pretty bad job of protecting Tom Savage, and then Yates comes in. They were doing a pretty good job, but then after that first drive in the second half, start the second half, offensive line starts doing pretty bad pass protecting wise again. Run blocking wise, I felt like it was pretty much up and down all game. I mean, the running game starts up front, and then the running game was up and down. That means the offensive line was also up and down. Although I do think Lamar Miller did struggle at times. Finding a hole, he would be too hesitant and just kind of sit there. But, I mean, that was kind of expected. I feel like the offensive line took a step back this week from previous weeks. Run, blo run blocking just hasn't been there for a while since 
I don't know if it's that Baltimore game. And the defense, defensive line. I feel like they did a pretty good job of containing the run. Didn't really get all that much pressure on Jimmy Garoppolo. And when they did, Jimmy Garoppolo would just stand there and somehow still make the throw on this terrible secondary. The linebackers I thought played well. Clowney, Cunningham, Cole, McKinney, and even Cushing, man. You gotta give Cushing credit where it's due. I think Cushing is gone after the season, but we can't overlook what he did today, and that's he kept contained a few times, rushed the passer a few times. He did a decent job. Nothing too spectacular, but better than anything we've gotten out of the outside linebacker position since Merciless went down, so I guess you could talk that up as a positive. And secondary <laughs> You guys already know the story with that secondary. Not much can be said about that secondary that we don't already know. It's terrible. Rick Smith has to do something to fix it this offseason. Joseph is up and down. Kevin Johnson struggles here and there. Didn't really see much of Kareem, but safeties were pretty bad. Although Kareem did get a pick at the start of the game. Or, yeah, I think it was start start of the game. Niners first drive, I want to say. Yeah, um... I think he was playing safety because he was like far back out there than he usually is. Again, Marcus Williams, our corner, played pretty well. Not really any bright spots about the secondary, really. Besides the Kareem Jackson interception, that's about it. But I mean, we already know what the secondary is. We already know what the offensive line is. And I still can't believe there's people out there crying to fire Bill O'Brien. Those people are in for a rude awakening next season. And I don't want to see those people dick riding the Texas next next season when they're 11-5 and five at the very worst with Bill O'Brien. I thought Shane Leckler punted a pretty good game. There was just one punt where he, he got the ball to bounce like twice at the one-yard line. Special teams just didn't down it. They weren't there in time, so... Kind of sucks for Shane Laker there. Fairbairn. Motherfucker kicks a what? 57 yard field goal or 54. Something like that. A long, a long ass field goal. He kicks it. He makes it like nothing. <laughs> like. And at the end of the half. Kicks a PAT. And misses it. Yeah. That kind of. Says it all about Fairbairn. Also to end the game. He kicked a 52 yard field goal. And also missed that one. The funny thing is though. He was way closer to making that 52-yard field goal than he was in making that close PAT. Yeah. That should say it all about Fairbairn. The guy is so inconsistent as a kicker. And I'm not sure I feel comfortable with him being our kicker going forward into next season. Because if the guy has to make a clutch kick, I don't trust him at all. I don't. Maybe the Texans should look elsewhere for a kicker. But, I mean, what much else can I say about this team that's already been said before in previous videos and by pretty much everyone else? So, that's pretty much all I have for you guys today. Um, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys later. Peace.